I found uh, a paper that had been published in like the most dynamite anthropology journals, the Journal of Human Evolution, I think it was called. I, I don't really remember, but it's their really great journal that everyone wants to publish in. And in that article, I found two, it was all about how the Neanderthal diet and the development of the brain. And they had two comments in there, both of which reflected a profound ignorance by stating that d dietary carbohydrates are essential and were essential to our ancestors mm. in the development of their brain. And I actually cited that article and then I just kind of hopefully tactfully just said, this is wrong. Um, and, and then shared with them a quote by the National Academy of Sciences in the U.S. stating that the lower limit of carbohydrates in the human diet is zero. Yeah. In other words, there is no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. And the whole the idea that the human brain evolved because our ancestors ate a lot of carbs, that's utterly ridiculous. And that's basically the impression I gave the audience, hopefully not too offensively, but I had many, many people come up to me afterwards, very, very grateful. Um, maybe the, the haters and the detractors didn't bother coming up, but no one said, no, no one uttered a negative word. It was just absolute gratitude at learning this reality of human biology and physiology, which is that, yes, it, it's because they mistake dietary carbohydrates with blood glucose. That right. it appears, what does appear to be the case is that the brain has some demand for some glucose. That appears to be accurate, although the lower limit is unknown. Early work by a, a fasting physiologist named George Cahill, he was putting people's glucose down to like 20 milligrams per deciliter, which most people would say, you're unconscious, you're in a coma and you're going to die. And these people, because they'd been long-term fast adapted, which I would say ketone adapted, they appeared to be no deficit to cognition. I mean, that's a pretty bloody low level of, of glucose. But nevertheless, let's kind of grant that side of it, that the brain has some requirement for some glucose. Well, it is a minimal requirement because if you take a body that has five millimolar glucose and you start increasing the ketones to one or two or even three millimolar, which is still less than the five millimolar of glucose. So there's still less of the ketone in the blood than there is the glucose. By then the brain has already dramatically shifted its energy use. And even though the ketone may be less than half of what the glucose is in the blood, it's now providing double, you know, twice as much of energy to the brain as the glucose is. So if the brain has any preferential fuel, it is absolutely for the ketone. And even further, it's, the closest I can come to kind of human or anthropology at all, and I don't want to get any closer, is what we see in infants. You can take a newborn baby, and the baby can breastfeed or bottle feed, and then within an hour, the baby is in a deeper state of ketosis than an adult would be after fasting for, 20, uh, for, for a full day. I mean, it is, it really, that baby will be at two millimolar ketones in an hour. And an adult, and for me, if I want to get to 2 million, I got to fast for like 36 hours to get to that point, you know? And, and I mean, so if, if there's any natural state, kind of back to our conversation a moment ago, it is clearly that a natural state is a state of ketosis. And, and I think even more, and I'll flirt again in the waters of anthropology, I'll dabble my toes, um, but it's, it's reflected in humans. We are such totally unique creatures where we are the only land-based mammals born obese and the only animal who has a brain that is larger than the birth canal, much to mother's chagrin. But that means we have these very big hungry brains and all of this chubby, adorable baby fat that is just producing ketones like gangbusters to fuel the brain growth. And if you have a baby that is born premature and lacks sufficient adipose tissue, it is much more likely that they're going to develop neurological disorders. All the more reason to chubby up that baby as quickly as you can. Wow. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. And we, and we do see this in, in um, uh, you know, working neurosurgery and uh, you know, we get a lot of premature babies that have quite a lot of problems and, and th that come around with uh, being just a, a, a premature child and, and neurological issues and neurodevelopmental uh, delays as well. And that can, that could certainly uh, explain much of that, that we're seeing. Mm -hmm.